Hello there, I'm your Code Monkey. Let's learn how to use machine learning and ML agents in Unity. This is a very powerful toolkit that lets you create some extremely intelligent AI. It helps you solve tons of problems that would simply be impossible to solve while using classic AI. There's immense massive potential in this toolkit, so you should know how to use it so you know how it can help you and when to apply it. This is a long video, but it's the only video you're going to need in order to learn how to get started working with machine learning in Unity. We're going to start completely from scratch and go through the entire installation process, then learn how to use it by setting up a scene to train an AI using reinforcement learning, and finally we'll look at the results to see the AI in action using our trained brain model. So make sure you watch the video until the end to understand the whole process. This video is meant to help you get started, and after watching it, go check out the playlist linked in the description where I will be adding videos covering interesting use cases made with machine learning in Unity. For example, I'm currently working on a specific Match 3 use case and many other different ones, so stay tuned for that. Now, the way machine learning works in Unity is through the ML Agents Toolkit, which combines several tools. First, you have the ML Agents Python package, which runs the machine learning algorithm. Then you have your learning environment, which is your Unity scene with the game running. And then you have the ML Agent C Sharp package, which lets you define the data that you feed into the algorithm, as well as using the resulting brain. So let's go through that whole process starting from scratch. First over here is the GitHub page for the ML Agents package. There's a link in the description. You can find tons of documentation here, so definitely give it a look. You have a quick readme talking about how the whole thing works, all the features, the release, the documentations, and so on. You've got the docs folder where you have all the documentation, so tons of topics on installation, getting started, and making some environments, and so on. And it also has lots of awesome examples which you can browse around to see how they work. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually install Python. And as of the time of this recording, the recommended Python version is either 3.6 or 3.7. So over here on the Python website, I'm going to go ahead and download 3.7.9. Again, if you're watching this in the future, make sure you check the official docs to see which version you should install. So go ahead, just download it and install it. After installing Python, open up the command prompt. So just click on the start button and type CMD. So here it is. And now there's actually one quirky thing about Windows 10, which is in theory, you should be able to run Python by just typing in Python. However, if you do, here on Windows 10, it opens up the Microsoft Store instead of actually running Python. So if you see this behavior, the solution is to instead of Python, just type py. So over here, instead of Python, just py, and I hit enter, and there you go, now I'm inside Python. And over here, you can verify that first of all, Python is running, and you can verify you have the correct version, which in this case, 3.7.9. Okay, so far so good. Now let's just exit out of Python. Okay, back in the command line. Now the next step is we need to change the directory to go to our Unity project. So over here is the Unity project I'm going to use. So just go ahead, copy the entire path, and on the command prompt, just change the directory onto that directory. Okay, now in here, what we're going to do is create a Python virtual environment. This will help us by keeping all of our projects separate, so each virtual environment is completely separate from the others, meaning that we can have multiple projects in the same machine, each of them using their own Python packages, and they will not cause conflicts with each other. So again, first go into your Unity project directory, and then in here we're going to type the command python-m. Dash -m means we're going to run a module, and the one we want to run is called vnv to create a virtual environment. And then afterwards, this requires a folder name where the environment will be created. So just keep things nice and organized and give it the exact same name. So just vnv. So this will create the virtual environment inside a folder named vnv. Now, if you're on Linux or Mac, the commands are slightly different. So check the official docs. And again, like I said previously, if you have the issue with Python not running when you type Python, then here instead of Python, just type py -m vnv vnv. So go ahead, hit on enter, and yep, now it's creating the virtual environment. All right, it's done, and you can verify that it worked by opening up your file explorer, and yep, over here there's a folder called vnv, and over there we have our virtual environment. Over here you see some folders, and you see this one with a bunch of scripts, and here we see a activate script. This is how we're actually going to activate the virtual environment. So back in the command line, we go inside the vnv folder, we access the scripts folder, and then run the activate. So when you do, Yep, the command prompt changes, over there it says vnv, so we are now inside the Python virtual environment. So any changes that you make here will not impact any other Python projects you have in your machine, like for example any other Unity projects with other Python libraries. Now before we install our Python packages, let's make sure our installer is updated. The Python package installer is named pip. So in order to make sure that it's using the latest version, let's run the command python-m. We're going to do a pip install. 
dash dash upgrade and we're going to want to upgrade our pip package so just go ahead hit on enter and you have now it's successfully installed the latest pip package okay so far so good now we can begin installing our packages and the first one we're going to need is a package called pytorch this is an open source library for performing computations using data flow graphs so it's the underlying representation of the deep learning models for that let's run the command pip install and here we need a specific version so here it is install torch version 1.7 and download it from this website now if you have issues or you're watching this many months in the future check the github installation docs to see which version to use so you go ahead run this and now we wait for it to complete Okay, PyTorch is now installed. Next up, we install the ML Agents package. So just do pip install ML Agents. However, just running like this may give you some compatibility errors. So let's try it and see. And yep, here we see an error where we have the incorrect NumPy version. So it's incompatible. So if you didn't get that error, then it's fine, just keep going. But if you did get the error just like I did, then the solution is to use a different package resolver so do pip install ml agents and then dash dash use the feature and the feature is the 2020 resolver so if you use the new resolver and run yep there you go now you can see it's uninstalling the incorrect version and installing the correct one all right so now we have all of our correct version and we can verify that the ml agents package was correctly installed by running the command go into ml agents dash learn and then use the command dash dash help and hit enter and yep, if everything went correctly, then you should be able to see the helm files for the ML agents learned package. So here it is, everything went correctly, so everything is installed correctly. And as of the time of this recording, I'm using ML agents release 10 with the Python package 0.22. So again, if you have any issues or you're watching this many months in the future, check the official docs for any version changes. Okay, so far so good. And with that, the Python side is all installed correctly. Now there's actually one more optional step here. If you look in the console, you might be seeing some warning messages. Now, these are not directly related to the ML agents package, but rather it's due to one of the dependencies. So if you're watching this in the future with another ML agents release, it might not show these warnings. Something saying it could not load a dynamic library with the name CUDA RT64 underscore 101. So if you see something like that, it's telling you that it cannot find the CUDA libraries. Now, this is optional. Everything will run just fine without them. So if you have no GPU, you can skip this step and it will use your CPU instead of your GPU. But if you do have an NVIDIA GPU, you can optionally install CUDA. So if you see that message, pay attention to the name of the missing library. So in my case, I was seeing a missing library that ends with underscore 101.dll. So that means that it requires CUDA version 10.1. So just go into NVIDIA's website and download CUDA. However, again, pay attention to the version. As of the time of this recording, the latest CUDA version is actually version 11. However, the missing library is version 10. So when you go into the download page, don't download version 11. Instead, go into the archive. In this case, we're looking for version 10.1, so go ahead and download that one. After installing it, if you once again run mlagents-learn-help, if you run that again, you should be able to see that the warnings are gone. So it now finds the CUDA libraries. However, you might be seeing another warning, which again, check the library name. So you might be seeing another missing library named CUDNN64 underscore seven. So this is the CUDA Deep Neural Network Library. So once again, just go into NVIDIA's website and search for CUDNN. So over here, just go ahead and download it. But again, pay attention to the library name. Again, in my case, it's missing the CUDNN64 underscore seven, meaning that it uses version seven. And again, the latest one is actually version 8. So when you download it, make sure you download the correct version 7. When you download it, you get a zip file, and inside you see a CUDA folder and a bunch of files. So in order to install it, you just go into your CUDA installation folder. So in my case, I put it on default, so on Program Files and NVIDIA GPU Computing Toolkit. Then inside you see the CUDA folder, and inside we see we go into version 10.1. And then over here we see our various folders, so just go ahead and copy all of these. So the include folder, the lib, and the bin. So just take these and drag them all in there. And after doing that, you can verify by going inside the bin library. And over here, you should be able to find all of the DLLs. So in my case, the CUDA RT64101. And the other one is the CUDNN64 underscore seven. And now if we run mlagents-learn-help, 
Now you should be able to see everything run without any warnings. So over here the command ran and nope, no warnings. Okay, so far so good. So with this we have all the setup for the Python side, including the optional CUDA libraries. Now let's go into our Unity project. Over here I have a project that's pretty much just brand new, so just a simple demo I have prepared. The ML Engines package works with any Unity version starting from 2018.4. Now I want to make sure that this video stays relevant for as long as possible, so in this project I'm currently using 2020.2, but everything works exactly the same if you're using 2019.4 or if you're in the future using the 2020 LTS version. So to install the ML Engines package, just go ahead, open up the package manager. Then here, select the packages and make sure you go into the Unity registry. And in here, just scroll down and find the ML Agents package. Here you can see the latest stable package, which as of the time of this recording is version 1.0.6. And again, I want this video to be relevant for a long time, so I'm going to instead install the latest preview package. So for that, I'm going to click on the gear icon, go into the advanced project settings. And in here, I'm going to enable the preview packages. And yep, I understand. So now over here on ML Agents, I can expand it, see the other versions. And here I see the latest preview package, which as the time of this recording is 1.6. But again, if you're in the production stage of your development and you want maximum stability, then go with the stable Unity LTS version as well as the stable ML Agents package. So select your choice and go ahead and click on install. Okay, it's done. And you can verify that everything installed correctly by just creating an empty game object. And over here, if you go into add component, you should be able to now see a group for the ML agents and over here the various scripts. All right, so we have everything correctly installed. Now over here for testing, I have this demo, which is pretty much taken from the official examples. It's just a nice character and over here is the goal. So the objective is to teach this character to move towards the goal and not fall off the map. So let's see how we actually use our ML agents. Now for that, first we need to create an agent. An agent is what's going to run our AI both for training and then for playing. And in order to make an agent, we just make a normal c -sharp script. So just right click over here, go into create a new c -sharp script, and let's name this the move to goal agent. And go ahead, open up the script. And now in here, we need to go up here to add using, go inside Unity, and let's use the Unity ML agents. Then over here, let's get rid of the default methods. We don't need them right now. And instead of inheriting from mono behavior, we're going to inherit from the agent class. So over here, you can right click on the agent and go into the definition. And here we see the definition of that class. So as you can see, we have a whole bunch of methods, all of them related to machine learning. Now, the way the agent learns is through reinforcement learning. So it's based on a relatively simple loop of observation where the agent gathers data from its environment, then it makes a decision based on the data that it has, and then it takes an action, and if it does the right action, then it gets a reward. So this is a continuous cycle where the agent grows to learn based on its observations and what actions lead to the highest rewards. Okay, so let's see how to implement this cycle. Again, here is the agent class, and we're going to need to override two functions. So we're going to need to override this one, collect observations, in order to give the agent some observations. And then we're also going to need to override this one, which receives a buffer with all of our actions. Okay, so let's go back into our script, so our move to goal agent. And first, let's look at how the AI takes actions. So we're going to do a public override, and we're going to override the on action received, which takes an action buffer. So this buffer then contains our actions as either floats or ints. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the machine learning algorithm only works with numbers, meaning that it doesn't have an understanding of what exactly is a player object or what it means to move to the right. All it knows is numbers. It's easier to understand this if we see it in action. So for now, let's go back into the editor. And over here, let's select our agent. So I have my nice agent in here. And I'm just going to drag the move to goal agent and attach it in there. And yep, here's our move to goal agent script. And when we added this, it also added the behavior parameter script. These are the various parameters that our AI uses. First, we have the behavior name. So let's rename this to move to goal. So give it a proper name to this agent. And then over here, let's look at the vector action. So let's learn what all of these mean. First of all, you've got the space type. So in here, you can choose between discrete and continuous. Now, essentially, discrete are whole numbers. So you can have 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and continuous are floats, so going between minus one to plus one and all of the numbers in between. 
So 0 0.2, 0 0.3, minus 0.4, and so on. We're going to do a quick test to see these differences in a bit. Let's just learn about the other parameters. So first, if you select continuous, over here you see the space size, and this is how many actions you will get on the vector. So for example, if you put a two here, then in the code, if we inspect our action buffers, we see that this contains two action segments, one for the continuous actions and one for discrete actions. So the action segment here is essentially an array. So when you set the space size, you are defining the size for the array of the type that you select. So if you set a space size of two, then this will have two positions with two values, a value on index zero and another one on index one. And then if you choose discrete, the size is the same. So it's how many values you get on that array. But then you also have this second parameter, which is the maximum value for this branch. So like I said, discrete means integers or whole numbers. So for example, if you put a one in here, then you will get an action value of just zero. However, if you put a two, then you're going to get an action value of either zero or one. And if you put a five, then you can get a zero, one, two, three, or four. And each branch can have its own size. So for example, if you're making a car AI, you would make the first branch refer to accelerating and braking. So you would put it with two values. And then for the second branch, let's say it would represent turning. So you would put three values, one for turning left, turning right, and don't turn. Okay, now before we go further and look into how to define training, let's just test these actions to get a better understanding for how all of this works. So first let's put it at discrete with just one branch, keep it simple, and let's put it with a size of five. And now over here in the code, we simply do a debug.log. We go inside the action buffers, then we access our discrete actions, and let's just print out what's on index zero. Since we have just one branch, that means we have one value on this array, so that value is on index zero. Okay, now before we can test this AI, we need to add one more thing. Over here in our agent, let's add the component, go into ML agents, and we're going to add a decision requester. Like I said previously, the way reinforcement learning works is through a cycle of observation, decision, action, and reward. So in order to take an action, we need to first request a decision. And what this script does is simply request a decision every certain amount of time and then takes actions. Now there are other ways of requesting decisions, but for now, let's just use this simple script. Okay, so over here we are ready to begin training and run our test to see what the AI will output over here. So for that, let's go back into our command prompt. And here, make sure you are inside the virtual environment. And in order to train it, it's very easy. We just run the command ML agents dash learn. So just hit enter. And yep, we see a nice ASCII Unity logo and a message telling us that we can start training by pressing the play button. So just do that, just in here, press the play button. And yep, we now have our training running. So we can check in the command prompt. Yep, we have everything running. So it listens to that and it's running our training. And over here, we can check on the console and now we can verify and see what the actual action vector contains. So let's head on collapse. And over here, we can see that we put just one branch with a branch size of five. So over here, we do have values going from zero, one, two, three, and four. So we have five values, zero to four. So this is what it means to have a discrete vector with a branch size of five. Now let's test with the continuous type to see what actions we get. So here, let's just swap it from discrete into continuous and with space size of just one. Then here in the code, it's pretty much the same. The only difference is we access the action segment for the continuous actions instead of discrete and the position is the same on index zero. And now we want to run this test. So here in the command line, first of all, we can see that the previous tests work correctly. So we have our training, we have our model and so on. And here, if we run the exact same command, ML agents dash learn, if we run it like this, there it is, we get an error. And the error is because we're trying to run training again on using the same default ID. So over here we have two options. We can call our ML agents learn with the force tag. So this will override the previous data or we can specify a different ID name. So let's try doing that. So dash dash run dash ID equals and then something name. So say test two. So now if we go ahead, hit on enter, and yep, we have it, we are listening on the port, so just start training. So just hit it and let's see. And yep, we have training running and now we can see what this one does. So we can see what a continuous action looks like. So over here we are getting values pretty much between minus one and plus one and everything in between. All right, so now you should have a better understanding of exactly how the actions work. So discrete is integers and in continues we've got floats from minus one to plus one. So as you can see, these are really just numbers. So it's up to you to decide what they represent. Now let's look at another part of the reinforcement learning cycle. Let's look at observations. So back in the code here, 
the way we collect observations is by overriding a function. So we just do public override and we're going to override this one, collect observations, which takes a vector sensor. And as soon as you do up here, it will add the using Unity ML agent sensors. So this is where this sensor exists. So we have our collect observations function. And now observations are how the agent observes its environment. So think of it kind of like the inputs for the AI. And obviously this will differ based on what problem you're trying to solve. So essentially you need to think about what data does the AI need in order to solve the problem you're giving it. Now our goal in this example is we have a character and we have a goal and we want to move the character towards the goal. So if you think about it, if you are controlling the player, so what information do you need? Well, first of all, obviously you need to know where you are. So we should pass in the player position. And then you also need to know where the target is. So we also need to pass in that position. So over here in the script, how we pass that into the AI is very simple. We just go into the sensor and call the function add observation. And over here, first let's pass in the transform.position, so the player position. So with this, the AI will have the data for the player position. And then let's also pass in the target position. So up here, let's just add a serialized field for a reference. So a transform for the target transform. So back in the editor, we have our field. Let's just drag the goal transform on there. And in here, we do the same thing. Sensor, add an observation, and pass in the target transform position. All right, so with these two positions, the AI should have enough data taken from observations of its environment in order to be able to complete its task. So we're passing in these two observations. And back in here, let's now look at the vector observation parameters. So we see a space size. So this is how many inputs we're going to give it. And back in our code, you might think that we're sending in two inputs. However, we're really sending in two positions. And you have to remember that a position is really a vector three, which is composed of three floats for the X, Y, and Z. So for each of these two positions, each of them is passing in three values. So with two positions, we're actually passing in six values or six floats. So in here for the space size of the observation, we're going to set it to six. Then the other parameter is the sect vectors. So this is for more advanced use cases where you need the AI to have some sort of memory. So if you set it to one, then it just takes one observation, grabs all of its six values and makes its decision. And if you set this to two, then it takes one observation and also the last one and uses both of those to make its decision. So for example, if you pass a stacked vector of more than one and you use the position as the observation, then the AI could then infer the direction of the object. But like I said, that's for more advanced use cases. So here, let's keep it simple and just put it at one. All right, so with this, we have our observations taken care of and we already saw how the actions work. So now let's actually use those actions. Again, the goal in this test is to move the character towards the goal. So for that, let's set the action space into continuous. So we have floats and let's set it to receive two. So we're going to receive one for the X movement of our character and another one for the Z movement. So back here in our code, let's grab our actions. We're going to define the first position as the X. So a float move X, we go into our actions. In this case, we're using continuous actions. So we grab that one on index zero. This will be our move X. And then the other one on index one is for the move Z. So again, like I said, the AI only works with numbers. So these aren't just floats and it's up to you to define what they represent. So here I am saying that the first float on index zero refers to the move X and the one on index one refers to the move Z. So we have this and then let's just do a very basic transform. So just transform, move the position, just increase it. Let's make a new vector three with the move X with a zero on the Y. We don't want to move on the Y and a move Z. Then we multiply this by time dot delta time and then by a certain move speed. So here it float for the move speed and for now let's leave it just at one. Okay, so with this very basic logic, the AI should be able to move the character. Now, once again, let's go back to the reinforcement learning cycle. We've taken care of the observation, decision, and action. Now all that's left is to add a reward. Our goal here is to have the character hit the target. And our character here has a rigid body as well as a box collider. And then on the target itself, it also has a collider with set to trigger. So we can easily test for this collision. So on the agent here, we just add a very basic private void. We add a on trigger enter. And when we enter the trigger, then we have our goal. Now there's two ways that we can give a reward. We can call the function set reward. So this one sets the reward to a specific amount. 
And then you also have the other one, which is add reward, which increments the current reward. So for example, when making an AI car driver, you would increment on every checkpoint you hit. But over here, we just have a single goal. So using set reward is perfect. So just call set reward and set it to, let's say one F. Now the specific value that you choose here doesn't really matter. So it can be one or 10 or 0.3 or pretty much anything. It only matters relative to your other rewards. Like for example, when we hit a wall, we should give a large penalty. Okay, so with this, we are setting the reward when we hit the collider. Now, another thing about how ML agents works is the concept of episodes. So one episode is essentially one run and the episode should end when the character either achieves the final goal or loses. So in here, after setting the reward, let's end our episode. So we just call the function end episode. So this will end the episode. And then when the episode ends, the game doesn't actually quit, but we need some way of resetting the state so we can train again. So for that, we can override another one. So a public override void, and we're going to override the function on episode begin. So this one is called as soon as the episode begins, and here we can reset everything back to normal. Now in this very simple example, we just need to reset the character position back into its starting state, which for now for the simple demo I have here, the starting state is just on 0, 0, 0. Now later on, we're going to add some randomness, but for now, let's just keep it simple and reset it back into the exact same point. So here, just transform that position and put it on vector 3.0. So this will correctly reset the state so that it can train again. Okay, so over here, we have almost everything ready to train. The last thing we need is just a penalty. So here, in order to make our training more effective, let's add some colliders on the edges so we can give it a negative reward and then end the episode. So let's just make a new 3D cube. Let's name this the wall and let's just put it on the edges. Okay, so here I added some walls, just some basic colliders. And let's also make it as triggers. And now we just need to identify if the player collides with either the goal or the wall. So for that, let's just make some basic tag components. So one for the goal and another one for the wall and just add the empty component just to serve as tags. So the wall and the goal. So now here, when we have the on trigger enter, we can go into the other and try get component. First of all, try get the goal. So if it does have a goal, then we're going to give a positive reward and end the episode. And then we check if it has a wall instead. If so, then we're going to give a negative reward and also end the episode. All right, so that's it. Everything should be almost done. Now, before we actually start training, the first thing we should do is validate to make sure that everything is indeed working. So for testing, there's another thing we can do, which is we can drive the actions ourselves. So let's override another function. So we're going to override this one. It's called heuristic and takes an actions out for the action buffers. And now here we can essentially modify the actions that will then be received by this function. So in this case, we're using continuous actions. So we go into the actions out and we access the continuous actions. This is of type action segment float. So we get those and then we can easily modify them. So in this case, let's use the input to move the character with the arrow keys. So we just modify these values. So first one on Z, we've got the move X. So let's go into the input to get the axis raw for the horizontal and then the vertical. Okay, so that's it. So this is just for testing. And now back in the editor, we select our agent. And over here, we have a field for the behavior type. So we have default, heuristic and inference. Now, in this case, we can manually set it to heuristic only, which will force it to use heuristics, or you can leave it as default. And as long as you don't have Python with ML agents running and you have no model selected, it will automatically use heuristics. So if we do it like this and we run, here is the game running. And if I use the mouse keys, yep, now I can move the character. Let's just increase the speed by a tiny bit. Okay, I have up the speed. Now let's make sure that everything is working. So first of all, movement is working. So we are correctly passing in the actions and mapping those actions into movement. Next, let's try hitting the wall. So go up there, hit a wall. And yep, there you go, it does happen. So it ends the episode and as you can see, it reset back into zero. And now if we hit the goal, yep, it also happens. All right, so here we can verify that everything is perfectly working and we have everything ready for training. Now in order to train is the exact same thing that we saw previously. Just in here, make sure that the behavior type is set back into default. 
and then open up the command prompt. And here, let's run the same thing that we saw previously. So let's give it a different ID and let's say this is test three. So hit on enter and yep, now it's listening. So start training. So just press on the play. And if there it is, there we have our agent and it's correctly working. So as you can see, now it is indeed going through the training process. So it's trying all kinds of values until it finds something that might give it a positive reward. Now, all we have to do is wait. However, there's one thing that we can do to massively speed up training. And let's also solve one potential issue that might happen. So if the issue is that if the AI never touches the goal, then it might simply learn to avoid the walls and just stay in place forever. So we can fix that to make sure that doesn't happen by setting a max step. So here on the agent, we can see a field for the max step. Now a step is kind of like an update on the training. By default, it runs 50 times per second, exactly the same as the physics update. So here, let's give it a max step of something like a thousand, just to make sure that the episode ends and doesn't run forever. Okay, so that's one problem solved. And here, let's just visually hide the walls just so it looks a bit better. Now, in order to speed up training, it's very simple. We can just use more than one agent. So let's take all of our training environment here and put it into an actual object. So just a container, let's name it our environment. And let's just drag our entire environment inside of there. And then we take this and let's just drag it onto our project files in order to make it into a prefab. So we have our prefab and now we simply copy paste this several times. So just duplicate, put one there, another one there. And now again, you can put as many as you want in order to train quite a bit faster than just one at once. All right, so there it is. Here we have 20 environments, all of them correctly for training. Now there's one very important thing when using this method. Here we are duplicating and moving our environments. So if you take this approach in order to speed up training, you need to make sure that all of your logic works based on local position and not on global position. So for example, this character here is indeed on local position of zero, but it's on a global position of 13. So if you reset it back into global position of zero, then it's going to go back in there and not where it should actually go to. So here on our logic, we're using position and let's just replace all of instances of position with instead local position. Okay, everything should be working. And now here, just to make this easier to visualize, I'm going to add something. So in the script, I'm going to add two more fields. So just some references to a win material, a lose material, and the floor mesh renderer. This is just so we can visualize the training. Obviously, this is not necessary. So just go down here. When we have our win, let's set the floor mesh renderer material into the win material. And when we lose, let's set it to the lose material. So back in the editor, let's open up the prefab, select the agent, and here we have our fields. Let's pass in the field for the platform and just the win and the lose material. Again, this is just for visual, just to make it easier to see the training happening on the video. It's obviously not necessary to actually train the agent. Okay, now before we start mass testing, let's make sure everything is working. So once again, validate it just with heuristic only. And let's see, here's all our agents and yep, they all move and it works good. And if we go towards the wall, yep, it turns into red so we can easily visualize that the training failed and in there, and yep, it turns to green. Okay, so the logic is working and we can visualize the training. Now we're ready to do some mass training. Just go into your agent and make sure that the behavior type is set to default. And now with our command prompt, let's just run our ML agents learn. And for the run ID, let's give it a proper ID. So let's name it move to goal. Okay, so just run it and it's ready, so just hit the play button. And yep, we can see all of the agents happening. We see some reds, some greens, and yep, it's actually learning quite quickly. So you see some reds happening, and now it's really just mostly green. So over time, the agent is learning, and it's constantly getting better and better. And with this very simple example, after just a tiny bit, yep, everything is working, and we can see pretty much all of them all in green. So here we have an AI that correctly learned how to move towards the target goal. Okay, so that's awesome. Now let's just stop training, so just stop the editor. And over here in the command prompt, you can see it saved the model. And the brain is this .onyx file. And you can see that it copied the results, so results, move to goal, move to goal, and we have the brain. So open up the file explorer and go into your project folder. And in here, go inside the results. In this case, we have the move to goal. And here we have the move to goal.onyx. This is our brain. 
So just go ahead, copy this, paste it onto our normal assets. And yep, here we can see the move to goal. So we have our nice brain. So this is our neural network model. And now in order to use this brain, let's just select our environment. So for now, let's disable all the others just to see this one in action. So select the agent and just click and drag and assign our neural network model. And then on the behavior type, you can leave it as default or you can directly set it to inference only. Inference means it uses the brain model rather than training. Okay, so let's test like this and we should be able to see our character using this brain to achieve the goal. And yep, there it is, we have our character correctly using our brain to achieve our goal. All right, so congratulations, you've just trained your very first machine learning AI, awesome. Now, the real challenge in machine learning is how to do training effectively. So there's the design of your training scenario, which matters a lot. So for example, over here, we test an extremely simple possible setting. So we're just getting a character to move from here all the way to here. So that's what the AI learned. However, if I now take this goal and I just move it down here and yep, there you go. All of a sudden the character does not know what to do. With the way that we set up our training, our AI only learned that it moves to the right and gets a reward. So by moving the transform, it didn't actually learn how to go into the actual goal position. So it's a very simple example of the AI doesn't know what to do since it wasn't trained for a moving goal. So this is why when training, usually you want to add some randomness to prevent the AI from being trained on just one very specific scenario. So there's a lot that you can do in order to define a proper training scenario. And then there's also tons of parameters that you can play around with. The parameters for the algorithm are stored in a configuration file. So if you go into the GitHub page onto the docs for the learning environment, create the new, and you scroll all the way down here, we can see the format for the training YAML file. So here I'm just going to go ahead and copy all this. Then onto the project folder, let's make a new folder, keep things nice and organized, name it config. And now in here, let's create just a brand new text object, name it move to goal.yaml. Then just open this with notepad or any text editor. And here just pass in those parameters. Now here I will not go into too much detail onto every single one of these parameters. If you want, you can go into the GitHub docs to see what each one does. So here, there's pretty much just one thing that we need to change, which is over here. This name here is the name of the brain that we want to train. So here in our agent, we gave it the behavior name move to goal. So that's what we need to add. So here, instead of rollerball, let's use that name. Okay, so go ahead, save that file. So here it is on the config folder, move to goal.yaml. And now once you have this file, you can run training using these parameters. So just open up the command editor and we're going to run the ML agents dash learn, and then we pass in the config. So it's on config. And then we have, in this case, the move to goal.yaml. And then let's give it a run ID. Let's name it test parameters. And now it's the same as previously. So just click on enter and now it's ready to run. So here on the agent, let's set it back into default so that it runs training and run it. And yep, now the agent is training and it's training using those custom parameters. Again, like I said, go check out that page to see what they all do. Now with this, one more thing we need to learn is how do we improve upon a model? So previously we made this model, which works pretty well. The character goes there and it goes towards the target. But as we saw, if we suddenly move the goal and all of a sudden the character completely fails. So we can take this model and improve upon it. So first of all, let's improve the actual training scenario. So let's add some randomness to both the start position of the goal as well as the character. So over here, when we have the on episode begin, let's take the transform local position and add some randomness. So new vector three, random.range, and let's see the random values. So here's the agent on local position of zero. So let's go from that one. So on minus three, and let's go up to maybe plus one. So for the X from minus three F to plus one F, then for the while, let's leave it at zero. And then for the Z, let's see. So let's go from minus two all the way to plus two. Okay, so we have the character on a random position. And then let's also move the transform target. So here, let's take the goal and let's see the randomness. First of all, on the X, let's start on this one. So on 2.4, and we're going to random up to that. So between 2.4 and 5. So here between 2.4F and 5F. And then for the Z, let's start from all the way down there. So from minus two to plus two. Okay, so with this, every time we start a new episode, we're going to select different random positions. 
So this will enable the model to actually learn how to go towards the target rather than just a specific position. Now, once again, before we do anything, let's validate to make sure that everything is working. So in here, let's choose heuristic only. And yep, it spawned on a random position. And now if I end, and yep, it's on a different position, different, different, and so on. Okay, so both the character and the goal, they're both on random positions. Okay, so now let's run training and improve upon the previous model. So for that, let's run the same thing. So the ML agent slash learn, we pass in the config. And then the way that we learn from a previous brain is dash dash initialize from. And then we pass in the run ID that we previously used, which was move to goal. So it's going to load up that brain. And then let's give it another ID. So dash dash run dash ID equals move to goal two. Okay, so let's press enter. Now it's ready to learn. And in here, let's just enable all the other environments and make sure that this one is set into custom. So it learns and let's hit on play. And yep, here we have the training at work and you can see that they are indeed going into random positions and we've got some reds and some greens and yep, it seems to be working. All right, now there's one last thing related to machine learning, which is a nice visualization. So let's look at that while our train is running. So for that, open up a brand new command prompt and here let's go into the project folder. Then once again, go inside the virtual environment. So VNV scripts dash activate. So we are inside the virtual environment. And now in here, let's run the command tensorboard. So tensorboard is the name of the utility that visualizes our results. And then we pass in the folder with our results, which by default is named results. So dash dash the log dir and log dir is results. So click on enter. And yep, now we see this message. So TensorBoard is running on this URL, so localhost on port 6006. So then just open up a browser and go into localhost 6006. And yep, here it is, and we can now visualize everything. So most importantly, over here we see our cumulative reward. So we gave it a goal of one when it hits the target. So we should be able to see this constantly increasing as the brain becomes a lot better. Then the episode length is also going down, meaning that the AI is learning how to get to the goal faster. And on the command prompt, you can see every time it updates. So right now it's updating the graph on every 10,000 steps. So just click on refresh. And over there we see this is the one that we're currently running. And as you can see, it started off in there and it raised all the way up there. If we look into our Unity build, we can see that it is indeed working. So we've got pretty much a sea of green. So even with the random positions, it seems that our AI has already learned how to go towards the target. Then down here, you can also visualize the policy. So these are all the inner workings of it. So we've got tons of things like the beta, the entropy, you've got the reward estimate and so on. So here you have tons of graphs for you to analyze and improve your training and your AI. Now back in here, we can see that the training went very well. So we can just stop training. And once again, we see that we save the model onto that position. So here, let's go into results. This is the move to goal two. Let's copy the brain, paste it onto our assets. And now here we do the same thing to use this brain. So let's hide the other environments and just leave on this one and select it, set it to use that brain and set it to inference. And if we run, and if there it is, we can verify that our training went indeed very well. So even with random positions, the AI is smart enough to actually know that the goal is not just to move to the right, but rather to move towards the goal. So here we have fully trained our AI from scratch without giving it any specific commands. Again, remember how all we did was we gave it the current position and the target position. We did not tell it how to move. We did not tell it what move means. We did not tell it any of that. So the AI learned to take those values and learned what it needed to do in order to gain a reward. So that almost feels like magic. That is the awesome power of machine learning. All right, so now you know everything in order to get started working with machine learning and ML agents in Unity. Machine learning is some really exciting tech with tons of potential applications. So definitely stay tuned for some more awesome videos. You can explore the official examples, which have tons of awesome use cases. If you have a specific scenario you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. Also, I'm currently working on a match three use case, so definitely stay tuned for that. And like I said, there's a playlist in the description that I will keep updated as I explore ML agents more and more. So if you're watching this in the future, check that link to see all of the videos. All right, so this video was a ton of work to make, but I really hope you learned a lot. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, post any questions you have in the comments and I'll see you next time.